All right, guys, one final NCLEX question on EKGs. If you haven't been keeping up with my basic EKG interpretation videos, go check out my profile. I will be posting part four tomorrow. Now let's tackle this question. The nurse walks into a patient's room and sees this rhythm on the monitor. The nurse knows all of the following can place the patient at risk for this rhythm except. All right, so except we are looking for a wrong answer here. All right, so I'm gonna move down here so you guys can read the answer choices. Now first, if you know this rhythm, please let me know in the comments. If you don't, do I see a P wave? No. Do I see a QRS waves? Yes, but they're very wide and they're changing in shape and size. This rhythm almost looks like a roller coaster, right? We go up with the ventricles, down with the ventricles, up and down. This is referred to as a twisting pattern and this is characteristic of torsades de points. Now let's look at the answer choices and assess your knowledge if you know which of these is not a cause for Tersaza points. Option one, a client with a magnesium level of 0.5. This is true, hypomagnesium can lead to torsades. Option two, patient taking erythromycin for a bacterial infection. There are certain antimicrobials, specifically those that end in mycin, that can cause Tersaza points, so this is true. Option three, a patient with congestive heart failure on long-term diuretic use. What do we know about diuretics? They can change our electrolyte balances, and torsades points can be caused by imbalances in specific electrolytes, so this is also true. And lastly, option four, a patient with chronic atrial fibrillation taking metoprolol twice daily. Metoprolol is a beta blocker. It is used to keep the ventricular rate under 100 beats per minute in somebody with this chronic rhythm. This is not a precursor for torsades at points, so we know that option four is our answer. Follow for more NCLEX questions of the day.